Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how heteroscedasticity can come about as a result of aggregation of data, or another word for aggregating is grouping of data. So let's say we were interested in finding out how um, the test scores of a given individual I depended on their level of parental income. So we might expect that as their sort of individual's parental income increases, then that would increase on average an individual's test scores because perhaps that individual goes to a better school, perhaps they have sort of computers at home, they have more books. So that leads an individual's test score on average to be higher. So let's say we have this sort of individual data and let's say we have 10,000 individuals. So for those 10,000 individuals, we have their parental level of income as well as their individual performance on test scores. So we could look at sort of plotting this data. So we have sort of 10,000 observations here and we see that as uh, the level of parental income increases, in general, there is some sort of general increase in their test scores. So the line is sort of sloping upwards there. But notice that because we have got lo loads and loads of individuals, there are loads and loads of sources of idiosyncratic error in this data. So even though there is a sort of straight line here, our model isn't fitting the data particularly well. So one thing we sometimes do is instead of estimating this individual level data, we might aggregate this data. So we might look at the test scores of all individuals within a specific group. So that grouping could be within a specific school. And we could look at how that depended on the sort of average level of parental education of individuals within that specific school. And if we were to draw a line um, using this sort of data, so perhaps in this sort of grouping level data, we only have 500 observations of test scores and sort of average parental income. So what do we expect to have changed versus the individual level data? Well, we have in a sense, because we've sort of averaged, then we might expect that we have sort of averaged out some of these individual sources of variation, which on average sort of has a mean of zero. So we might expect that using our aggregated level data, our model might fit the data significantly better. Well, that in principle seems like a really, really good thing to do, but what are the sort of problems with doing this? Because it seems like we've got something for nothing when in fact there are no free lunches in econometrics. The problem here is that in a sense by moving from individual level data to group level data, we have done away with some of this sort of individual sources of variation in the data. And in doing that, our least squared estimators of the sort of population parameter beta are no longer efficient. Even though they may be unbiased, they they're essentially, by throwing away this sort of individual source of variation, we are sacrificing their efficiency. So more often than not, if we use individual level data, we are going to obtain estimates of beta, which are closer to the true population value of beta. So the true population effect of parental income on test scores. But I haven't spoken about how heteroscedasticity might arise um, in this sort of aggregating of the data. Well, it comes about actually in looking at the error term, because whenever we are talking about heteroscedasticity, we're talking about heteroscedasticity in the size of the error term. So, well, the way in which we can think about this is that the sort of average error of um, an individual or of a school um, is made up of a linear sum of the errors of all individuals within that school. So it's sort of U1G plus U2G plus all the way up to the sort of last individual NGG. So, and we sort of weight this um, sum by the number of individuals which are in that group. So if we think about another group, so we think about all the individuals in group F, well, the 
average error of individuals in group F is sort of one over the number of individuals in group F times the sort of linear sum of all the errors of individuals within that group F. So we sort of continue all the way up to U and F and F. Um, and so what we can see here is that the level of the error or this average error depends on the size of the grouping. So here in the case of we were estimating it for group G, it was sort of one over the number of individuals in group G. For the number of, for the average error of individuals in group F, it was one over NF times the sum of the individual errors. So in principle, this means that we have that the variance of the sort of average level of error in group G does not equal the variance of um, the average level of error in group F because of the fact that the average level of error depends on the number of individuals which are used in these specific groups. If the groups are made of different numbers of individuals, that means that the variance of errors in both of these groups is going to be different, which means that, in a sense, the variance of our errors is not equal to some constant sigma squared. It varies by group. And that is a result of the fact that we have used different numbers of individuals to make up our groups.